All right, hello everyone. I'm Amio, and I want to show you a bit of a demo of some 3JS stuff I've been working on recently. So, um, I started this kind of work about a year ago, uh, building sort of a first-person game-like thing in the browser, and yeah, I've been continuing that work this fall, and I wanted to give you guys a bit of an overview of how I built some of the stuff I built here, because I've built up quite a bit of different infrastructure. I, I mean, you could kind of call it a game engine, but it's like a, a very lightweight game engine that runs in the browser because um, it's all 3JS. But yeah, let's let's jump right in. So this is the, the first level I started off building this fall, and it had some very direct inspiration from this image I saw on TikTok. Uh, I thought it was a really cool vibe, and uh, so I reconstructed it in the browser here. Um, so yeah, the, the, one of the first things you'll notice here are these cool, very prominent, kind of unrealistic, but really cool looking god rays. And um, that's actually a, a project that I worked on with Nate Programs. Um, it's called Three Good God Rays. And it is, yeah, Nate wrote the original shader code for it. And then I ported it into like a reusable library that works with the, uh, the post-processing library. So yeah, that's how these really intense god rays are generated. They're they're volumetric screen space god rays, and they're from a big light source back there that you can't see. And you'll also probably notice these big floating cubes. Um, we'll get to those. We'll get to those. Uh, those are procedurally generated. Um, but yeah, I, this whole world here. So there's there's a lot of stuff to unpack. Let's let's start with the actual the map that is generated here. So this building, I built in Blender. So um. Let's open that up really quick, and I'll show you sort of what everything is there. So yeah, this this is all modeled by hand. My my Blender skills, for the record, are are very novice. I'm getting better, but yeah, I, I modeled this thing in Blender. Everything is um, exported to GLTF, which is a pretty common format for 3JS and a lot of other sort of 3D applications like that these days. So it has a native GLTF loader. Um, I have built up some infrastructure in my, um, you know, my code here that um, will load the GLTF file for these different scenes, and it'll set up some some default stuff like collision detection. It'll set up um, you know, the three JS scene. It'll set up like this pause menu integration. I have a little graphic settings and stuff here, which which does change some things depending on what device it's on. But yeah, and you'll, you might hear this. Uh, oh, it broke. I can't hear it. Let me fix it really quick. Um, I've got to map my sound inputs. So you'll you hear a little noise here when I hit the ground. That's my most recent addition. It's, it's a very small thing, and you think it is pretty easy, but there's a difference between hitting the ground and hitting a wall. And there's, anyway, that's something I'm going to be working on next, having proper sound effects for things. Um, but yeah, I guess let's move on with sort of this stuff in this level really quick. So I mentioned that all these big floating cubes here are procedurally procedurally generated. So these are um, Vixec fractals, uh, the 3D version. So yeah, these these do generalize to 3D. You can kind of see the pattern here. Um, but yeah, I, I add these in, generate the meshes in the browser using 3JS instanced meshes, so they're relatively cheap to render. And place them around the world. I kind of just tune the parameters a bit to make them display in the right locations. Um, but yeah, after that, it was mostly a matter of adding them to the collision world, so I'll talk about the collision detection a little bit later. I'm using a uh, AmmoJS, which is a, a Web script and web assembly port of the bullet physics engine, which is an old physics engine, but still works pretty well. And um, so, yeah, and it's textured using procedural or um, synthesized textures, which I created with stable diffusion and then did a bunch of other steps to make them into PBR textures. You can see here that, um, well, let's find a place where you can actually see the, the, the sheen a little bit, the interaction with the with the lighting. So, yeah, there you go. They are fully PBR textures with, like, roughness maps and normal maps, and they're seamless as well. You can you don't see any tiling here. 
Um, I will get into that later. I actually wrote a little post on my website about how I made these as well, which I'll link to in the description. But yeah, let's see. Um, so we covered, covered the textures. Yeah, all these little blinking lights here are... They gl they're glow through the fog with some clever use of um, a bloom effect. So, yeah, I have a, a post-processing pipeline for this scene. Uh, which I'm using actually a lot of effects here. So I mentioned the god rays, but three good god rays. I'm using another Nate programming pass called Nate AO, which is only actually present when you're in here. So ambient occlusion, um, it makes the corners and little like recessed places darker where the natural light wouldn't reach. It adds a nice bit of realism, especially to these interior places like this. Um, and I cranked up the settings really high because I thought they looked cool. I'm also using some other standard per touch processing, like anti-aliasing, which is important when we're using all these other effects. It helps smooth over some of the weird artifacts. And then I'm moving lights around dynamically and changing the way things glow. It all it's all 3JS though. All the all the rendering is just vanilla, more or less 3JS with that post-processing library. So all right, let's get into the collision detection a little bit more. So I mentioned that this is using AmmoJS. So yeah, I have a custom build of this. So let, let me actually show you that really quick here. So yeah, I, I've kind of taken the AmmoJS and pulled it down locally. I've deleted a lot of the stuff I don't need out of it. Um, these are like the exports basically that are exposed. So it's, it's a C++ library. And it gets compiled into WebAssembly via mscripten. And yeah, this, this this file defines all the exports that I that it exposes to JavaScript. So I only keep the stuff that I actually need, and I'll, I uncomment stuff, and I add new stuff as I need to. And for the actual character, I'm using this kinematic character controller. So I actually had to do a whole lot of changes and updates to this to make it work reasonably well for 3.js, because there were a whole lot of weird bugs and issues it required a decent bit of tuning for me to actually make it, you know, work reasonably well. But now that I have it set up, is so all the all the meshes in the world will by default get added to the collision world as triangle meshes. So every every single triangle gets added individually, which honestly works way better than I thought it would. There are some weird situations where you'll get um you know, artifacts or collision issues, or you clip into walls a little bit or fall through floors, but most of the time it works well, especially if your your Blender models aren't really badly made. Like, if you have inverted geometry in your Blender mode, Blender stuff, like the red, that means that the faces are inside out, it can have issues, but for the most part, it's not much of a problem. Um, so yeah, the, we're using the kinematic character controller and... Um, I have a little dash here, which I added in. I have an Ultra Kill. I don't know if you're familiar with that game. Ultra Kill inspired um, feature, which I, I really enjoy. It's just using a jump. So, yeah, reusing a lot of the kinematic character controller stuff. I know I'm kind of glossing over a lot of details. I have been working on this for a long time, as I mentioned, but um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, so, I guess I should talk a little bit more about the textures, right? So for the textures I mentioned, I generated them with Stable Diffusion. So I actually have it, it running locally here. Uh, it's the automatic 1111 um, web UI for Stable Diffusion. I have an AMD GPU and it works pretty well. I got no major complaints. Took some funny little tuning to get it to work. But as I mentioned, I have a, um, a little write-up on my website. I'll try to link this in the description. Um, but yeah, I wrote how to generate these 4K PBR textures with Stable Diffusion XL. So yeah, these are proper 4K textures, and they're seamless. And um, so, by default, Stable Diffusion generates 1K textures. And um, to get it up to 4K, I built a little tool which will stitch together multiple 1K textures into a, a 4K texture while maintaining the seamless of it. So the way it works is you pick a couple different stable diffusion generated textures. I'm pulling them out of a folder on my other screen here. These might not be the best ones to show it off, but it'll, you'll, you'll get the idea. 
you're gonna have to play around with it but you generate a bunch of different textures that are kind of like each other you load them into here and it'll it'll stitch them together and crossfade between the um the borders here so yeah this actually works way better than you might than i expected it to work um for the most part you can't really see the seams um at all so yeah like this is like the, the the source images that i generate and i'll drag them in there and then you can just save this image off and um convert it to png or whatever so yeah let's see what else we got um i use this with poly.com site to generate um tbr textures out of it so they use this is more ai <clears throat> they'll take your source image I'm just going to use a, a 1K one to, to demo this really quick. And it is seamless, so we can we can start off by uploading that. And then you can just go down here and generate your roughness map, metalness map, and it'll it'll convert from the, the base color into like a a texture to use for your albedo map, basically. So I can just put that really quick. And I do pay the 20 bucks a month for this currently. Um, I've definitely got my values worth out of it, I think. And it does a really good job. So that's how I generated the, um, you can see it's light responsive to light. And then, you know, the, it's got the, the normal map and the, uh, this is the height map. I don't actually use that, but this is the roughness map. And that is what I use to generate pretty much everything. I generate this texture with the uh, generated this texture, which you can't really see very well in this lighting. Generated the rocks, uh, the cubes texture with that. Um, and I've had really good success. Um, oh yeah, one other thing I want to show really quick is this custom shader. So I basically took the mesh physical material from 3JS and I re-implemented it and added a bunch of custom stuff to it that I use. So like... Um, X tiling. That's one of the big things. Let me just get this off so I stop getting confused. So this texture is actually put it on in such a way that it, it never repeats. It's it is seamless, but even seamless textures you can see repetition after a while. But this uses the the hex tiling shader. Um, Let me see if I can... Oh, yeah, so I, I, I basically stole the code from a shader toy. I adapted it to work with 3JS, but yeah. This is, like, the the way it... You can see it never repeats, and it does that by, like, converting the texture into a bunch of hexagons and then interpolating between them dynamically. It is a bit performance-intensive because you have to do three texture samples for every single fragment. Um... And you have to do that multiplied by your other maps. So if you have like a roughness map and then a normal map, and then a metalness map, you have to do three times. You know, three plus three plus three, which is can get really expensive because a lot of GPUs are memory bound these days. Um, but it does look really good, and it it's very easy. Like um, I basically just say uh, turn on tile breaking, and then you set um. A scale factor which is just how big your patches are the, the, the different hexagons and it just works so it's really nice um i am very bad again i mentioned with blender so i try to avoid uv mapping as much as possible um so i actually have like another way of for if you have a lot of geometric surfaces right like if all your walls are happen to be very flat and well aligned with the axes of the world um I have this UV generation feature which I added to the shader, so you can actually just... It's like a... this is a very basic version of triplanar mapping, and it, it happens in the vertex shader, so it's it's very cheap and you only have one texture sample per, per fragment, uh, whereas triplanar mapping you need three again. But yeah, this is just a nice excuse, a nice way for me to escape having to do proper UV mapping on all this stuff. Because uh, that is not my forte. I try to stay closer to the code if possible. So this is a, this is a great trade-off for me. Yeah, again, but the Blender skills, that's not, the, that's not the highlight here. I try to build out things that are impressive in, in the fact that 
it would be really hard to do by hand. Sort of the counter for my lack of those skills, but anyway. Yeah. Hope you found this stuff interesting. I'm, I might make some other videos on some of the other levels I build to highlight some of the other cool things that I've sort of developed to make them possible. Yeah. Um, hope you got something out of this, and thanks for watching.